Hello, and thank you for joining us for our presentation of our project titled Improvement Team, Improve Team by Improving Wellbeing. Shifting our culture to one focused on good psychological safety, leading to a happier, safer, more stable and sustainable workforce. And it'll be delivered by myself, Jennifer Bailey, and my colleague, Elise Palmer. We're both Improvement Advisors from the NHS Lanarkshire Quality Improvement Team. As we say after the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic and start our recovery plan, greater importance needs to be placed on staff wellbeing and reflection and recognition of the journey staff have been on during the last three years. It's essential to be able to move to a more positive future. Across health and social care, the workforce have experienced potentially the toughest time of their careers. The pandemic isn't yet completely over and the impact of this, this has had on our staff has only just started to become clear. Staff are reporting that teams feel fragmented. There's been a lot of staff changes and changes to the way care is delivered to patients in a short space of time. And in many areas, morale is at an all time low. Staff absence continues to be at a record high, which is creating an expectation to do more with less, leading to burnout. This has been recognised, but the challenges to resolve this remain. From a national perspective, the Scottish Government are investing an additional three million pounds a year to provide enhanced wellbeing support both locally and nationally, and they have created a national wellbeing hub and helpline for advice. More locally, wellbeing has been brought to the fore in Lanarkshire by the development of a wellbeing strategy. The aim is to ensure that all staff, wherever they're based, have access to tailored evidence-driven resources to promote and sustain their health and wellbeing. NHS Lanarkshire corporate vision is that staff will live their best working lives in Lanarkshire. Throughout 2021, our quality improvement team held two reconnect days. And within the discussions on these days, themes like social isolation, fragmented team working, staff sickness, learning to use new systems, increased workload pressures, home working, too much desk time, and death by meetings were all mentioned as contributors to reduce psychological safety, most of which are a direct consequence of the changes experienced in response to the pandemic. In addition to this, the results from the annual iMatter survey suggested that some of some areas for our team to focus on improvement around centering, centering and building trust and good team working practices. The success of this project would result in improved team morale optimum psychological safety and an appreciation of what matters to people, enabling us to be an effective team. When embarking on this project, the initial problem we discovered was that we didn't actually know very much about wellbeing, so we engaged with some subject matter experts. And another issue that appeared quite quickly was that our team didn't know much about wellbeing either but we'd all understood that it could be very individual. In order to understand what wellbeing meant to each individual within the team, we conducted an appreciative inquiry to help us get, get to grips with that. We asked questions like, what would good wellbeing look like and feel like for you? That was in session one. We looked at what currently works well with psychological safety in the team. What have you seen work well elsewhere that could also work for us? What things could you change straight away or tomorrow and in six months that could have an impact on your own psychological safety? What things could you change straight away tomorrow and in six months that could have a positive impact on the team's psychological safety? And we had great engagement at both events that we ran to do our appreciative inquiry. There was lots of feedback, but even after session one, we realised that wellbeing was massive. It was a very broad area and we needed to refine the scope of the project in order to have impact. Trying to define this broad subject, we researched many tools, but the one that seemed to fit best was something we developed from a self-assessment coaching tool called the Wheel of Life. We used the wheel to identify six to eight key priority areas from the recurring themes noted in the appreciative inquiry. These themes will be unique to the needs of any team who use them, but for us, they were joy in work, effective team, engaged team, psychological safety, 
work-life balance and making connections. Our team members were then asked to use the wheel and score each section out of 10, one being not satisfied at all and 10 being highly satisfied. This allowed us to gather scores and understand the priority areas of focus. This turned out to be psychological safety. And I'll tell you a little more about how we use this tool in a moment. In carrying out the initial self-assessment wheel, we were able to establish that the area of the wheel that scored the lowest was psychological safety. Our team average score came out at 5.4 at the point of the baseline measure. Therefore, we wanted to focus on this area to move the project forward, as we felt this would have the most impact overall. Our aim statement, or our how much, by when, became NHS Lanarkshire Quality Improvement Team will improve team wellbeing with a focus on psychological safety to a team satisfaction score consistently greater than 8 out of 10 by March 2023. This was very tricky and required a lot of thought. The measurement around psychological safety and well-being can be quite crude and subjective. Often conversations in our team were things that added most value. And although the data we eventually did gather helped to confirm beliefs and inform progress, feedback, discussions, and just inherent feelings that like belonging, safety, happiness, enjoyment, trust and engagement were all key factors taken into consideration throughout this project. As an outcome measure, we used our wellbeing assessment wheel as a tool to gather reliable and routine data around psychological team safety, as well as the other five elements of wellbeing, which we captured and compared as balancing measures. On the next slide, I'll take you through our test of change timeline. And our test of change is quite clear in this timeline, which have been adopted, which have been adapted and which have been abandoned. This is our test of change timeline, which ran from September 2022 until present. Now, not all of these tests of change will work for every team. And as you can see, they didn't all work for our team either. Some tests were abandoned. Those are the orange ones on this timeline. As, as a team, we quick re, quickly realised that they didn't work and they were having limited positive impact. And so therefore, we were going to abandon these tests. Some tests were adapted numerous times and those are the yellow ones on this timeline. And we were adapting them to learn and improve in continuous cycles until we reached the optimum results. Some tests, very few, worked first time. And it was easy to see that they made a difference. But then we needed to test these in a variety of different ways, in different circumstances, so that we were sure that they could be adopted. And those are the blue ones on this timeline. And we adopted them in practice and embedded them into what we just do as our process. Key tests that appear to have the most positive impact on psychological safety related to our team meeting and to celebrating success. And I'll hi highlight these tests of change in our graphs in the next couple of slides. Our outcome measure was to improve psychological safety with an aim to achieve in eight out of 10 as a team. Over the duration of the project, as you can see with, with this chart, psychological safety has improved. So we started out initially with a median team score of five out of 10, and we have reached nine out of 10 at that last data point. So our aim currently has been met and has been exceeded at the time of recording this. But what our challenge is now as a team is to ensure that we implement the changes and ensure that these changes that we have made that have had a positive impact just become business as usual and so that we can sustain our improvements. We used a Pareto chart to identify the primary contributors of reduced psychological safety. And what we identified here was that the primary causes were associated with our weekly team meeting. So to measure the success of our team meeting, we first had to discuss and agree our team meeting purpose 
and get full team agreement on this and a shared vision with this. So as a team, we agreed our purpose was to meet as a team, to connect, share information and seek help and advice to support us in collectively achieving our shared purpose. So then we took a weekly measurement against this to identify where changes were resulting in improvements. And these scores were obtained from all of our team members at the weekly team meeting, completing the score sheet. And at each of the meetings, we then compiled the scores from these. So as you can see, we had four different measurements. We measured whether or not the meeting met the purpose and a score out of 10 was fully meeting the purpose. We measured whether or not the team meeting was focused with a score of five being very focused. We measured whether or not the meeting was productive with a score of five being very productive. And we also measured the pace of our meeting with our pace of three being just right. And as you can see, we also collected and provided opportunity for team members to provide additional qualitative information about our meeting. So these four charts are showing our process data relating to our team meeting. The top left chart is relating to our overall team meeting purpose. Now, the optimum score, the optimum purpose score was 10 out of 10. However, we set our aim at eight to allow for continuous opportunity to improve. We noted a trend from the 31st of October, which evidenced a positive impact from test of change seven, and that related to our meeting frequency. What we decided to do with our team meeting frequency was to move our team meetings from weekly to fortnightly. And then in between, we had topic based learning sessions introduced. The other additional charts here were measuring focus, productivity and pace for each meeting. And we also noted the duration of our meeting. Now, what we noticed with all of these measures is that there was a direct correlation between some of them. So, for example, the duration of our meetings and our pace could be negatively or positively affected by a long rush meeting or a short meeting with limited content. Similarly, we also noted that the overall purpose scored Show a, showed a direct link to focus and productivity and again shifted at similar rates, both positively and negatively. The most challenging aspects of our project have been relating to things like staff absence. In general, just changing historical cultures and practices have been challenging. And also just there's been some late adopters and laggards within the team. And I guess as well, it hasn't always taken day to day priority. But there's also been some really enjoyable parts to this project. We have and have had a very effective and a very engaged team. We've had a common goal and we now understand each other better as a team. And it feels that we've got that more honest and open culture and wellbeing has absolutely been prioritised and continues to be prioritised. And with that in mind, it feels that it, there's been a long term change within our team. And also just to mention that the leadership buy in has also been fantastic. So in conclusion, we hope that this has given you a good overview of our project and the key improvements we made to get positive results for our team and our colleagues within it. And if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us. Thank you.